Hey guys, Miss Sirota here, and we are doing topic four, um, lesson two, estimate the product of a decimal and a whole number. And your objective is I can use rounding and compatible numbers to estimate the product of a decimal and a whole number. Don't forget rounding. Um, the number behind it tells the number that you want to round what to do. And compatible numbers is when we choose a number that's close to, but easy, cal easy to calculate or easily calculatable. All right, so I can use rounding and compatible numbers to estimate the product or answer of a multiplication problem between a decimal and a whole number. All right, so you will be on the next blank page of your um, math journal. And we are doing lesson 4.2, estimate the product of a decimal and a whole number. How do I know that I'm going to be multiplying by this statement? I hope you said because of the use of the word product, because product is the answer to a multiplication problem. All right, so we are in the large workbook, volume one, page 135. Now you've already had the lesson from Miss Ray, so this is the practice, all right? So again, page 135, large workbook, volume one. That's where we are. And I am doing number three. Okay. So, we're estimating using numbers that could be close. All right. So, so the first number is 0 0.87 times 112. All right. So, easily calculatable. 87 hundredths. What is that close to? What, what tens digit would that be close to? Well, that would be close to 90 hundredths, right? And then 112, what compatible or easily calculatable number is that close to? Well, based on what we did yesterday in 4.1, we're looking for zeros over here, so I know how to jump this decimal. So is 112 close to 100? Well, sure it is. And then the number of zeros here tells me how many times I need to jump my decimal place. So the answer to this would be 90. So yeah, you're kind of making up math problems based on numbers that are close to or roundable with these digits, okay? And this could have been 110, but that would have made the math harder to do. All I was looking for was a number over here that would allow me to jump these decimals. We're looking for zeros, okay? Number four, 104 times 0 0.33. All right, well, what is 104 close to that I can easily multiply by that has zeros behind it? Well, it's close to 100, so I'm going to change that to 100. And then 33 is close to 30, because again, I'm looking for those zeros. So I'm going to do 0 0.30. Now, this tells me I need to move that decimal place two spaces bigger. So I'm going to go this way, and now this equals 30, okay? Because now the decimal place is back here all we're doing today. Number five, nine and two hundredths times 80. All right. Well, I have a basic fact. Hmm. I've got a basic fact here. I've got a whole number of nine and a whole number of eight. So, I don't think I need to round 80. I've already got a zero in there, but I need to make these zeros. So I'm going to round this to 9.00 times 80. Well, if you know what you're doing, 9.00 is just nine. So nine times 80. 
And now we have basic fact. What's 9 times 8? Yes, that's 72. And then we have one zero to add. So the answer is 720. All right, this is this shows you understanding of manipulating numbers, of changing numbers. And if you understand how to change numbers by using compatible numbers or by rounding, this is easy. If you don't quite understand how to change these numbers, you may need to ask your teacher in open hours for further clarification. Okay, here's number six. Oop, wrong color. Here's number six. 54 hundredths times 24. All right. Well, 24 can easily turn into a 20 if I'm looking for a compatible number. It's close. A compatible number means a close number that ends in a zero. Now this can turn into 50 or 60. All right. This can turn into 50 or 60 because we want that to be a zero. We want this to be a zero. So I'm going to go up to a 60. I'm going to go 60 like this. Okay. And then <laughs> I'm going to take this 10 right here. And that is how many times I'm going to move my decimal over here. So I've moved my decimal. So now I have 6.0 times 2. Well, what is 6 times 2? Because again, 0 0.0 doesn't matter. And why is it only 2? Because I gave this 0 to make that one move. So it's 6 times 2, and 6 times 2 equals 12. Again, manipulation of numbers. All right. Number seven, 33 point, or 33.05 or 33 and five hundredths times 200. 200, yes, 200. All right, I don't feel I have to manipulate this number. I already have my zeros. So that means I have to turn this into something that makes more sense. So 33 and 5 hundredths can be rounded or compatible. I can, I can make this, I, basically I want this to have a zero and all these to become zeros because I'm looking for those zeros. So 30 is very close to 33. So I'm going to turn this into 30.00 times 200. Do these zeros matter back here? No, they don't. So technically now I have 30 times 200. Now, do I have a basic fact in there? You bet I do. I have 3 times 2. What's 3 times 2? That's 6. Now, do I have some zeros to add in there? Yes, I do. How many zeros total? Three of them. Well, this number is 6,000, and let's just make it really colorful. The answer is 6,000. All right, guys, same page. Page 135, Large Workbook, Volume 1. You are going to practice on numbers 9 through 16. All. Okay? Good luck. If you're having any issues with compatible numbers and rounding, you are always welcome to use Google. You are always welcome to go back through our videos and find where we taught you rounding and compatible numbers. And um, you are always, always welcome to go visit your teacher in open hours. So if you're having any issues, make sure you go visit your teachers, guys. Have a wonderful day. Um, just to review what we just did. Where are you? Just to review what we just did. And your purpose for learning this was you were to estimate the product or the multiplication problem of a decimal and a whole number using rounding and compatible numbers. So your objective was I can use rounding and compatible numbers to estimate the product or answer of a decimal times a whole number. Okay? Any questions? Go see your teacher. Have a great day.